Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I think we'll make a start. There's um, 39 people um, who are here, so that is great. Um, I've got my colleague, M, who's helping me out in the chat. So if you do have a question, please type it into the chat and we will endeavour to answer you at the end of the session or we will email you if we don't know the answer. So just wanted to double check that everyone can see the slides. If I can have a show of hands to say that you can see everything, perfect, thank you. That's fabulous. Okay, so this session uh, is for students who perhaps are new to UQ and certainly new to Queensland, new to Australia. Um, this is what we're going to cover today. All right, so we're going to talk about personal safety, both at campus and at home, particularly around uh, beach safety, um, some issues around Queensland weather advice, um, online phone scams and keeping you safe, the emergency contact numbers. We'll also touch on driving in Australia and Queensland, drug and alcohol, the dangers, obviously, and a little tip about the animals in Queensland and Australia and the friendly ones and the ones that you might need to watch out for. I'd like to formally acknowledge, to start by doing the acknowledgement to country. The University of Queensland acknowledges the traditional owners and the custodians of the lands on which we meet. We pay our respects to their ancestors, their descendants, who continue cultural and spiritual connections to country. We recognise their valuable contribution to Australia and global society. Okay, let's just talk a little bit about your personal safety. So, one of the things that you need to do is to make sure that you've got a bit of a safety plan and you're aware of your surroundings when you're out and about and so forth. So that might mean if you're new to Australia and you're living somewhere and you don't necessarily know um, many people, it's probably a good idea to text your friends you know, where you're going, perhaps the address and perhaps when you get home safely. Um, it's important to make sure that you don't go anywhere, that you don't feel uncomfortable. Um, and any areas that make you feel uncomfortable, you should certainly not go into those spaces. Um, in terms of your personal information, you will have an ID card and if you need to show ID or proof of age, particularly to get into uh, venues that serve alcohol, um, you'll need a photo ID from the Department of Transport. And the best way to do that is to go online and you can apply and so forth. It's also really important for your personal safety that your contact details are up to date in my signet. Many of you have applied to study at UQ offshore. You might have listed your home country's mobile number. As soon as you have an Australian mobile number, it's really important for your own safety in case the university needs to contact you to update your personal details. And that includes your living address, and your phone number and so forth. Um, it is actually a requirement of your student visa that we have an Australian address and an Australian mobile number. So please make sure that you do that as soon as you can. In terms of 
any campus and emergencies on the UQ campus, whether that's at St Lucia or at Gatton, you can certainly contact security. Um, security is available 24-7 and the number is on the screen there, 3365333. It is actually also not permitted to sleep in the library. It's not actually a safe space to sleep. Certainly a space, safe space to study. But, you know, if you are asleep and you perhaps have some valuables or a laptop and so forth, it can be potentially dangerous because members of the public can also attend the library. Triple zero is the Australian number for any off-campus emergencies. So if you were at home or on a bus or on a train or anywhere walking in a park and you felt unsafe, triple zero is the number that you need to have pre-set in your phone so that you can dial it quickly. And I'd also encourage you all to download the UQ Safe Zone app. The UQ Safe Zone app, if you visit student services at Student Central in Building 41 and you don't know how to do it, the team will be more than happy to show you how you can do that. It allows you to call security very, very quickly when you're on campus. It doesn't track you off campus but it will allow security to know exactly where you are. Should something happen, you just press the button and they will attend as quickly as they can. So it's just another security um, setting for you to be aware of. And um, certainly it's something that you can download quickly and it doesn't cost you anything. So for those of you who are international students, you have Sonda off-campus support, which is free with your Allianz insurance. And the details will be provided with your insurance statement. And there is a 24 seven rapid response network um, on the details for Sonda. Just spending a little bit of time about the Australian legal system and safety. And in Australia, like many places in the world, it is unacceptable and illegal to threaten to use physical, psychological, economic or emotional violence against any member of your family. So there are very strict laws that protect against domestic and family violence. And domestic violence is a community issue and we all play a role in stopping and preventing domestic violence. If you are experiencing domestic violence, there are a number of support options for you at student services, including a confidential sexual misconduct support team. And the student advice team will also assist you to report the situation to police and seek legal advice should you wish to do so. There are a number of confidential support services um, that you may be familiar with. The 1800 RESPECT number is often uh, quite heavily promoted in the media. Um, you've got the police number, which I've covered, and some additional gender specific numbers there as well. Um, please make sure that you've got those numbers handy and they're available to you at no cost and they provide confidential support. I'm going to talk a little bit about scams. Um, sadly, in student services, one of the things that we often are approached about particularly by our international students who seem to be very heavily targeted. You will potentially be contacted for some sort of scam 
where people are pretending to be from your country of origin, um, government department, or from the Australian taxation department. Um, and there are certainly many counts, sadly, of phone calls where students are targeted, um, where they threaten students with arrest if they don't pay X number of dollars to the scam artist. These are fake calls. And if ever in doubt, it is really important to talk to a trusted friend, to talk to somebody in student services, to talk to somebody in the legal team at the UQ Union, to actually get some support before you do anything like transfer money. Um, we particularly warn students about accommodation options that are often advertised through WeChat or Gumtree that are in fact not legitimate accommodation options. They will ask for a bond. They will ask for money up front to even view a property. So if you're in any doubt, it's best to get advice and hold on to your money very carefully. Um, don't, don't in any way pay people cash or particularly through WeChat, we're seeing a lot of students um, being targeted. Um, so it's very, very important to make sure that you're looking at legitimate accommodation places and that you are providing money and your details with a genuine agent and the lease that you're signing is genuine. Unfortunately, people are getting very, very clever at faking all kinds of things, including leases and offering accommodation that sometimes is not even theirs to offer. We've had students, sadly, who have been offered rooms in shared houses. Uh, the person has paid a considerable bond of a few thousand dollars only to turn up to find out that the house that they have been offered a room in uh, isn't anything to do with the person who made the offer and they don't have the authority to do so and it's very hard to get your money back. So don't want to scare people, but we certainly really want you to think very carefully and check any time you're being asked to pay money, hand over money, provide credit card details, do not do so before you get somebody else's view um, to make sure it is legitimate. I'm just going to play a very quick clip here. Hey, Aileen, just letting you know there's no sound on the video.
So hopefully that was um, an interesting little video uh, it's from our news service. So it's obviously something that um, all people, in, including um, Australians all over the country, are experiencing. Um, the, next, the next scam that we just want students to be particularly aware of, and sadly we see quite a few students that come to us very distressed um, about these sorts of emails is a term called sextortion, which basically means that somebody has a revealing or an in, or an intimate image of you, um, either because they've taken it from the net or they've had access to your phone or they've obtained it by fraudulent means. At the end, she's like, I heard. I'm um, sorry. Sorry. Um, or they're obtained by fraudulent means or. Um, sorry, Eileen, you can hear me now. The video before didn't have any sound. Oh, oh, sorry. I could hear the sound here. Oh, awfully sorry. Okay. Um, we perhaps can, Emma, we can put the link um, to the video. Yeah, I can find it. People, that would be amazing. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, I could hear the sound, but I didn't know that it wasn't, um, um, that you couldn't hear it. Um, so just coming back to sex torsion. So sex torsion basically is when somebody has an, an, an intimate image of you and they say that they will release it or they'll publish it or they'll put it on a Facebook site or they do something public with it unless you pay them money. So um, again, this is something that sadly we see quite a lot of students involved in. It is not your fault. It's really important not to feel embarrassed or ashamed, um, but to seek help um, because obviously these people who are doing it, who are usually offshore, um, they may not even have any um, intimate images of you, but they may say that they um, have been watching you on your laptop and so forth, and people feel very worried about what, what they may have access to. Again, be very, very careful and make sure that you speak to somebody in student services, a trusted family member, somebody in the police, um, or somebody from the UQ Union to make sure that you have support. So just some numbers here. Um, I'm sorry that people couldn't hear the um, words to the video. We'll put a link to that in the chat so you can watch it at your leisure. Um, but basically there is an, an, an email here and a phone number for people to report any sorts of um, scams that you might be worried about. We also at Student Services have regular visits from the Queensland Police um, Fraud Team. They are, are on site during semester to talk to students, to support you if you've got any questions and so forth. So just go to um, Building 41 if you're on the St Lucia site 
or if you've got any other questions, just email student services and they'll be able to put you in touch with QPS. A um, couple of minutes just about road safety. If you've come from another country, we may be driving on a different side of the road um, to where you're used to being. Uh, obviously, if you're driving, you need to know the Queensland road rules. Um, if you are using a bike, a scooter or electric bike, um, you can be fined unless you don't wear a helmet. Um, but more importantly, if you fall from a bike without a helmet, if you think about an egg, cracking an egg onto a bit of concrete, that's sometimes what the tragedy could happen if you are not wearing a helmet. So it's really, really important to, to do that, even though a lot of people in their home country don't have to wear helmets. Um, it is law here, but it's really important for your own health and safety and so forth. Um, in Australia, it is law that drivers and passengers must wear a seat belt. Um, and the other thing is that it is actually illegal to use, even handle your mobile phone if you are driving. It's quite a significant fine. It's over $1,000. I think it's $1,500. It's quite a lot of money. Um, and the police use cameras that are on the road. Um, you may not even know that you've had your photograph taken until you get the fine in the mail. So again, we don't want you to do that. So please do not use your phone. You actually have to turn off the car and be parked in order to use your phone in the car if you are the driver. It's really important. We see a lot of students quite upset about the fine. Of minutes about the weather in Brisbane. Why do we talk about safety and the weather? Um, if you have just arrived, you probably will find that it's quite cool for Queensland at the moment. Depending if you've come from a country where it snows, it mightn't be cool at all. Um, but we do get very, very hot weather as well. Um, and between sort of November and March, if you haven't been here before, it can be in the high 30s and 40s. And in terms of safety, um, sunstroke, sunburn, all of those things, they're a real risk. So we talk about wearing a hat, putting on sunscreen and so forth. Uh, it's really important that you are aware of sun safety. Queensland is one of the highest rates of skin cancer in Australia and people can very easily become exhausted from the heat. So if you're going for a long bike ride and you're not drinking enough um, and you're in the sun and you're not wearing sunscreen, you can end up with really, really bad sunburn and you don't want to end up in hospital with bad sunburn. Very unpleasant, very painful, and not a nice way to spend a few days at all. So just be mindful that the sun in Australia is, is very hot. And even in the winter, um, you can get burnt very quickly if you are outside and it's quite a bright sunny day. So always wear um, sun protection. I'm going to spend a couple of minutes talking about beach safety. Many of you are here, you're in Queensland, you're thinking this is fabulous, I'm going to get down to the beach. We've got the Gold Coast fairly close. You've got South Bank with a man-made beach as well with a pool. Um, it is really important that you understand that in Australia, the sea, can be very dangerous for people who can't swim. And what you'll find is that we have a system here of flags, they're red and yellow flags, and that's where the beach is patrolled and you have surf lifesavers who will be looking for your safety. And I don't know if anyone has seen Bondi Rescue. Um, there's a famous beach in Sydney where that gets a lot of tourists 
And unfortunately, before you know it, people can either drown or they get taken out by what they call a rip. And it's a really strong undercurrent and we don't want our students to be on the news, missing or drowned or going kayaking and you know having some terrible thing happen and then we have to speak with your families because you're missing so never ever ever swim at night in the dark in the sea very very dangerous um, and it's always really good to swim with some friends so that they know that you're in the water and the most dangerous thing that you could do is to go out on your own um, you can't swim and you get taken out to sea. It's, it's a really, really common occurrence. So we spend a lot of time talking about beach safety because sadly, every summer we do have news items of students who are here from other countries, no matter what university they're going to, who go out for a good time and can get into really serious trouble. So if you remember when you're going to the beach, if you find yourself swimming in between the, the flags, the red and yellow flags, that's the safest type of beach to swim in. And even if you went to South Bank and there is a man-made pool there with some sand, it's, it's really pretty if you haven't been there, there's a lifeguard there as well. So you'll, you'll see these lifeguards and their job is to make sure that people are safe. And we really stress that if you are going to do water activities, it's always a good idea to talk to a lifeguard and say, you know, is it safe to go in today? Because sometimes the weather conditions can be very windy. And even though the beach is patrolled, they'll be advising people not to swim. So it's always a good idea to check for beach safety. We do not want any harm happening to you. And you might have heard me say a little earlier um, the, the term rip. And the rip is a term whereby the water looks as if it's very, very calm and you think that you can swim. But unfortunately, you won't see the rip. It's actually underneath the surface. And it can take you out to quite deep in the ocean. And it's really dangerous for people. So that's why we say, you know, never, ever, ever swim under the influence of alcohol or drugs. That's not going to help you in the sea. And the little image that we've got there on the screen on the right, that's called a blue bottle. Um, it's, it's a type of sea creature that lives in the ocean and it has tentacles. And you may not see it, it's quite small, but it is blue and they will sting you. And it is a very, very unpleasant um, bite and sting to have. So these are the sorts of things you need to watch out for. Um, we do have shark nets in Queensland and in Australia. And generally when there are shark nets, there are signs to say that this beach is safe to swim in. And it's a much better beach to swim in rather than an open sea beach with no um, lifeguards because you don't know if there will be a shark or there will be some other sea creatures in there that are a bit dangerous. So certainly don't want to discourage you from enjoying the beautiful beaches here in Australia, but you need to educate yourselves around surf conditions, water conditions, and also be aware of your surroundings. So one of the things that people are worried about when they come to Australia are snakes and spiders and other sorts of creepy crawlies that we have in Australia. So if you have ever been to New Zealand, you'll know that they're very proud that they don't have any snakes in New Zealand. If they do have any snakes, they've probably got on a ship from Australia. But if you do leave shoes outside and you live in 
you know, a fairly bushy area. Um, sometimes snakes or a spider could go into your shoes and so forth. So it's always, again, just be mindful that, you know, you need to be careful when you're leaving um, things outside. Just shake out your shoes before you, you pop them on if they're outside. Um, and the interesting statistic there is only 0.03% of people bitten by a snake die. So my colleagues put there, don't worry. But the reality is that snakes are probably more frightened of you than you are of them. Um, but they, they, they can be in the backyard. They can be um, under rubbish bins or under newspaper piles or compost bins or those sorts of things or in many of houses that have got Queenslanders, you've got wood piles, snakes can hide in there. Um, it's just always wise not to touch a snake. Um, if you do get bitten by a snake, there's the poisons information line and you can always call an ambulance. And usually, um, you know, there is an antidote for what people are, are being bitten by, but don't, don't worry. I hope none of you are bitten by a snake, but it's important that you don't go actively poking a snake if you did see a snake you don't want to provoke a snake bite all right so a couple of seconds about the birds in Queensland now if you've been on campus you will have seen two of our favorites the brush turkey um, that's that one on the left with the red neck and looks like a turkey um, they're very very territorial the uh, males raise the chicks and at times you'll see them um, running after you as you walk about campus because they're worried that you might be touching their eggs. Um, they're territorial, um, but they're easily spooked. They're not going to attack you. The other um, bird on the right with the beak, uh, we suggest students just keep an eye out for those. They're a bit more aggressive. You can be sitting outside um, anywhere on the campus and you could be eating your lunch and the bird could actually come and swoop your food out of your hand. They are quite aggressive. Um, they won't attack you, they're after the food, but just keep an eye out for those. Um, you'll also see ducks on campus and we ask students not to feed them because we don't want to encourage them to be dependent on humans and human food is not ideal for ducks. The only other bird that you need to be mindful of in Australia is a bird called a magpie. It's the black and white one there. Um, the reason why we say to be wary of those they are known for swooping um, during spring. Again, it's a territorial thing. Um, and they, you sometimes see people wearing helmets with spikes on their bike helmets. That's because they particularly um, feel threatened by people who are driving past their nests on bikes because they're fast and noisy. So sometimes magpies can be a bit dangerous and I have had a few colleagues that have been pecked on the head by magpies. Again, not a very pleasant experience. Um, just be mindful of those. And the other territorial bird on campus is called a plover. Um, they will chase you again when they're nesting with their babies and so forth. And you'll know about it because they're usually very noisy and they will, they will chase you. But again, they're not going to attack you. They're just going to defend their babies. At home, if you live um, in the suburbs or you have a garden, you're very likely to see um, some of these insects. I don't think you'll be seeing many carpet pythons but we do have students with backyards and they are in the backyard. Um, one of the things that you'll see very, very commonly are tiny little geckos. And if you've come from Southeast Asia, you're probably used to seeing those on the wall. Um, they're quite harmless. They usually sit quite high um, and, and they, they're quite tiny. Possums 
um, are a native animal, you'll see those sometimes at night. They usually cross telephone wires and so forth. And sometimes they're in people's roofs. Um, they're protected. So if you do end up with possums in your roof, um, speak to student services and we can provide you with details on how you can call Animal Rescue to rehouse your possums. And flying foxes and blue tongue lizards, again, um, if you've never seen those type of um, insects or animals before, they can be a bit scary, but again, they're probably more scared of you. The flying foxes, you'll see them literally flying um, in the evening, sort of twilight time, and some trees will have quite a lot of those, and they're a bit scary because they're a bit bat looking. Um, and the blue tongue lizard, actually does have a blue tongue um, again but many people keep those um, as pets with appropriate licenses the blue tongue lizards they're, they're not poisonous so we call them you know friendly animals they're a bit different but don't be spooked if you have them in your garden all right, so we're coming to the end of the presentation. Just a note about drugs and alcohol in Australia. The minimum drinking age is 18. It is illegal to go into an establishment and drink if you are under the age of 18. One of the things that we suggest uh, people do is if you are going out in a group and it's to a pub or club, just keep an eye on your friends and your mates um, because unfortunately Australia, um, like many parts of the world, can experience drink spiking where people put something into your drink um, that is not what you want in your drink. So you just need to watch that. Um, marijuana and recreational drugs are illegal. Um, recreational drugs, you are likely to be offered recreational drugs if you go to a club or a festival. And we are very clear to say that these are unsafe and you really have no idea what you're taking um, and you don't want to end up um, in hospital or, or worse with some sort of major drug uh, reaction. Smoking is very regulated in Queensland and certainly there is no smoking or vaping um, anywhere at eating or drinking venues and in outdoor public spaces. So on any of the UQ grounds, um, you cannot smoke. You cannot smoke um, in cars or in car parks or in public pools or um, there's very, very limited places that you can smoke, which is quite different to some other countries. Worst case scenario, you or somebody you know has got some sort of medical emergency or you've had a drink spiked or you've taken some sort of um, illegal medication, you always need to call an ambulance. Again, that's the triple O number. And obviously, if you know, you see somebody who's a friend and you think that they've taken something or you're worried about their safety, um, call an ambulance because as the saying is there on the slide, you might just save their life. Um, it's more important to make sure that your friend or family member is okay rather than worry about getting them into trouble. Um, your life is, is premium. Um, in the unfortunate situation that you need some sort of support for any sort of sexual misconduct um, on campus, there is a team by the name of the SMSU, and they're the special sex, they're the sexual misconduct support unit team. And they're specialised counselling staff that provide assistance to, prov to survivors of sexual misconduct. And they provide counselling and also work with the student advice team to provide academic and social adjustments uh, if you need to do that. And again, it's a confidential 
reporting system and you can book through student services. So again, if you visit respect.uq.edu.au for more information, if you require that support. And just a word about student services. I'm one of the principal student advisors here. My name is Aileen and myself and my colleagues, there are six principal student advisors and six student advisors. So we, we provide a range of resources and advice to help you adjust and to make the most of your time while your students here. So things that we cover, uh, things like new student support, this session that we're running today, um, advice about accommodation and uh, making sure that you're um, registering with genuine accommodation providers. We have a counselling team here. We have learning advisors, so specialist staff who are people with a teaching background who can help you with your study skills. There's also general international student support and welfare student support. So we have a financial hardship application. And we also provide a lot of support for diversity, disability and inclusion for those students, both with visible disabilities and invisible disabilities. So if you were to require assistance with a scooter or assistance with a student access plan because you had an accident or you have a health condition, you certainly would come to student services. And we also have a multi-faith chaplaincy on the St Lucia campus and the details are all on the student services web and all services are free to UQ students and they're confidential. So to finish, uh, for those of you who are international students, you will need to have um, Allianz Insurance and additional uh, rapid response supports are available from your Allianz Insurance provider. Um, all of those details will be in your insurance brochures and your insurance paperwork, but they provide 24-7 rapid response and they also do virtual and in-person support. So you could have phone support or Zoom support. If you're unsure um, or you feel unsafe or you're dealing with a confronting situation, um, feel free to reach out to Allianz. So that brings us to the end of the formal presentation. Em, I think that's a lovely picture of you there. I think that's my colleague's Em avatar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so just wanting to double check Em, are there any questions in particular? I can see there's a few questions in the Q&A. Yeah, there's a couple. I think the first one got a bit lost. It was, uh, are there any suggestions on which Australian mobile services, um, like what's a cheap one they can look for? Oh, we don't recommend any particular service providers. I think it depends on what your budget is and what you feel comfortable with and where you actually need to call. We would suggest going to any of the major um, telephone companies such as Telstra or Vodafone or any of those and just compare plans online. But there isn't a particular company that um, we would say use Telstra over another service provider. Um, again, it's important just to shop around. That would be my comment there. I don't know. Em, would you have any other thoughts about mobile phone companies? Uh, not that I know of. Sorry. No. <laughs> Useless in that regard. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yes, I've seen I certainly have just seen about you can't people couldn't hear the video. Terribly, terribly sorry. We will um post the link to that video. Um 
so you can certainly listen to that but it was basically um, a media story talking about um, phone scams and just making sure that people understand that really you know if you're being asked if you're being if something makes you feel uncomfortable if you're being asked for money or there's a sense of urgency or they're saying they're from a particular government and you're going to be arrested it's always a shock but just take time to check out the legitimacy of the call and never, ever, ever, I can't stress this enough, hand over money or send money or send money via WeChat or any other way, um, gift card or whatever, um, unless you're absolutely certain that they are legitimate. Um I have a question around where can we purchase pepper spray and defense tools? I have no idea. I have no idea. And I'm, I recommend yeah. looking into the legality of that too, because I do believe things like pepper spray is actually illegal to carry. Yeah, and it varies between country and, and so forth. You know, I I totally understand that people would be feeling um, nervous um, at times. I think if people remembered that I talked about the UQ Safe Zone app, certainly for um, anything on campus, um, that is a fantastic free immediate response from UQ security. And they're able to tell exactly where you are when you press that phone. But I agree with you, Em. I don't believe that pepper spray uh, is, is legal. And in terms of self-defence tools, again, I don't know what the person is asking about, but I would be very careful about what you perhaps are wanting to carry in Australia. Um, I know, for example, knives are illegal to carry. So you know, it depends on which country you're from to what you're you're used to. Um, if you've got a particular query, I would encourage at, attending the um, student central um, service when we have the liaison officer from QPS, the Queensland Police Force. Um, you can always ask them if you've got something in particular that you wanted to check and see if it's legal to have or not. But I, I would be very cautious and I agree with you, Em. I think um, we just need to be very careful that we don't, you don't get yourselves into hot water. Um, and Another person has asked me, and thank you for this, you've said, what did I mean by diving into the surf? Okay, it's a really good question. Um, it's a nice example of how when you're um, born in Australia and you use the term, it means um, something to us, um, but it is not always clear. So by surf, we usually mean um, the waves in the sea, so it's not a flat um series of water like a river or a stream so the surf will be waves you know coming to the shore and sometimes people they just um, jump into the water um, without knowing the depth or without knowing um, you know is it uh, are there reports of um, blue bottles or other sorts of things in the water so we would certainly say that you know it's probably best just to walk in and swim gently into the surf rather than just diving head first in because sometimes people can injure themselves by not knowing what's in there. There could be rocks there or it could be fairly shallow. So certainly um, the, the, the comment about diving into the surf um, is something that we would say, don't, don't do it. You know, walk into the surf, use your legs, but don't dive head first into the surf. Uh, can we use our home ID cards to verify our age? Hmm, Em, have you got a thought on that one? Um, home ID cards, I'm not 100% sure, but passports are usually accepted um, for ID clubs and uh, bars and things. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you for that. Um, but you, you, because you will um, also get a UQ student ID card, um, you, you know, you can certainly use that, but I think Em's right, definitely use your passport. 
you may not or you may not your home ID card may not um, necessarily be accepted. Um, oh, lovely. Thank you for the lovely person that said thank you for the answer. Beautiful. <laughs> Ah, uh, dear me, I'm laughing because somebody's asked a drop bears real. Now, those of you. Absolutely, who... they are. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a set. This is a very, um, a very, uh, what, what's the word when it's like a myth. So you, you might have heard there's a video. And if you Google drop bears, um, a person was playing a prank on an international visitor. I think they were from. England or America I'm not too sure but they were certainly not from Australia or Asia and they they scared them that koala bears were quite um vicious and that they would attack you so um koala bears live in trees they eat eucalyptus leaves and they do a lot of sleeping um they're highly highly unlikely you to ever just attack you um, and no the answer is no they are not real <laughs> not, not real um do you need to apply for an Australian driving license or can you use an Indian driving license for the span of our course at UQ I believe you will need to apply for an Australian driving license M I'm Again, I'm not exactly sure. Do you I'm have fairly experience? sure you do apply and you do have to pass um, a driving test to get an Australian license. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I would have thought that's the case because each country has got different laws and, and so forth. Um, again, if you have any particular questions and um, you're not getting any um, clarity from the... Google searches and so forth. Um, to the student who's asked this, please come and visit us at building 42, 42, yeah, 42. Yep. Um, and um, just we can just check that um, online. But I agree with you. I think that you definitely need to sit a test and, and apply for an Australian driving licence. That's my experience. So that brings us to the end of the questions. I'll, I'll just wait one more minute to see if there's anything else that people have asked us. No. The session has been recorded. So if you know of other people who um, perhaps want to listen to it again or just clarify, something um please let us know and we can send you the link to the recording um other than that i hope that that's been helpful um we certainly don't want to spook um people coming to australia um but we also want you to be safe and we want you to look out for your friends and we're always here in student services to support you, provide you with advice and support or check in with other areas such as the Queensland Police, et cetera, if we don't know. Um, and it's always better to ask if you're unsure um, rather than potentially be scammed or, or lose a lot of money or put yourself um, in harm's way. Um, and then deal with those consequences. So I hope um, on behalf of M, thank you for your support. Thank you for attending today. And I hope that's been helpful. And if you are starting your studies for SEM2, all the best. And if you're continuing, I hope that you have a really good semester. And thank you all. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>